All right, we're going to continue with the construction of a G major scale. And you ask, well, why G? Why not D, A? Because the sequence of events is going to be as follows. The C scale, the prior scale, its fifth note was G. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to select that as our next scale. And I don't want to get into it right now, but you'll see... Uh, the importance of that as we progress. So, uh, here's our G clef. It wiggles ar around the G line. And I have G, A, B. Remember, we need consecutive letter names. Why do we need consecutive letter names? Because on paper, it wouldn't look like a scale. That's the reason we're doing consecutive letter names. We want to see line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space. In the case of C, space, line, space, line, space, line. We want that, uh, if it doesn't look like that, then it, it doesn't look like a scale. And then uh, as a musician, you're looking at this and you're saying, what is this thing? All right, so... This is why the uh, notes, the letter names of the notes have to be consecutive. All right, now we're going to quickly put in half step, our little markers. Okay. I'll bring it over here. And uh, so we're assuming that all of these adjacent notes are going to be whole steps except for three and four and seven and eight, which are half steps. So let's see what happens. Um, G to A is a whole step, A to B is a whole step, B to C is a half step. Now, isn't that interesting? Because I've seen that before, and I've seen that in the C scale. Here's G, A, B, C, and here's G, A, B, C. So that is inherited, that little operation there is inherited from the prior scale. Interesting. Okay, so now we're up to C. The whole step. And C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. E to F. Well, that's one of our uh, two adjacent white keys that are half steps. So we have a problem here. We would like to have a whole step here. So we have two choices here. If I want a, a whole step between E and F, I can flat the E, and then I'd have an E flat to an F. But then that would change the relationship of the D to E, which was a whole step and which was good. So I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to mess with this E. So I have to do something to this F. Well, what can we do? It's only a half step now. I have to widen it. So I say it's an F sharp. Okay. And that is our G scale. And I'm going to add one new concept now, and that's the concept of a key signature. So if I'm an improviser and I see this at the beginning of a song that I'm going to improvise on, what that's telling me is that when you improvise or write a song, use all the white keys, but when you come to an F, F no longer exists. It's an F sharp. So over on the right here, I'm going to redraw our treble clef. And I'm going to put an F sharp up here. And I'm claiming that this is the key signature, the key signature of G major. 
which tells me it's all white keys except for an F sharp. Okay, now we're going to write the G scale in the bass clef, and I need an F clef or bass clef. My two dots tell me that this fourth line is F below middle C, which floats up here. And instead of starting, if this is F, then this fourth space is G. But if I go down, I have F, E, D, C, B, A, G. So the bottom line, G, is where I'm going to begin. And there's G, and A, and B, and C, D, E, F. So this is like a math problem. This is our given, and we have to solve the problem with what's given to us. And the, the question is, is, is this a major scale? And if not, prove that it isn't, and then solve it. You know, how do you make it into a major scale? So first thing we do, half steps between three and four, seven and eight. Okay, and now we check G to A. That's good, that's a whole. A to B is a whole. B to C is our half step. And we saw how this G, A, B was inherited from the C scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The top uh, four notes of, of the C scale. And we continue on, C to D is a whole step. And we know that from C major. D to E, that was in C major also. That's a whole. E to F was in C major, but we need a whole step here. When it was in C major, E to F was the half step. But we need a whole, and we found we have to add an F sharp. So there it is in bass clef. And if I were to write the, if, if I were to uh, compose a piece in G major, I would write my bass clef and then put the F sharp there, indicating that I'm using the G scale to write my piece. And you would see it over here like this. All right, now that we've written the G scale out, the fun part comes again that we did with C major. How fast can we say the G scale? And the G scale is a lot easier because you have G and then you have the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's, that's great. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The little snag is here, G, A. Once you get to A, G, A. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right, G, A, B, C. So you might want to work on this little snag here. G, A, B, C. G, A, B, C. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But an F sharp. But I just want you to know the letter names. You know, can you say the letter names without the, accent, without the sharps or flats really fast? G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G. And then you can add D, E, F, sharp, G. Okay. G, A, G -A B, C, D, E, F, sharp, G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. What's the seventh note above of G? F sharp. Eight, seven, G, F sharp. What's the fifth note above G? G, A, B, C, D. G, A, B, C, D. Later on when we do intervals, I'm gonna say, what's a perfect fifth above G? And you're gonna, uh, let me see, what is, uh, so you have to know G to D, it's a fifth. All right, now we're gonna take the G scale, and if we go backwards, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G, so we're gonna write it backwards. G clef. Now, I, I didn't realize what I did up here. Um, if you have an F sharp at the beginning of a piece, this is like 
in computer programming a global variable. And what it's telling you is whenever an F comes up in the piece, after this, it is to be played as an F sharp. So, if you do put the F sharp at the beginning of the piece, indicating that you're in the key of G, at no other time in the piece do you have to use the sharp symbol. That's the cool thing about it. That's why it's, it's like a global variable. All right, so uh, I'm going to keep doing both because I just want to cement in your mind, you know, what a G key signature looks like, and, and, and you have to see the scale, all right, with, with the sharps. So uh, we'll begin with G. Now we're sitting on top of the fifth line. And F sharp, and E, going backwards, D, C, B, A, G, and we could put a little key signature in here, like that again. All right, and once again, everything checks out. If I go one, two, three, four, there's my half step, the B and C, but we're coming down now, C, B, and here's seven and, seven and eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's the other half step, and it's an F sharp, and uh, F sharp and G. And I just wanted to, um, when we, uh, I just want to review up here. When we had the EF to begin with, and we were in a quandary as to what to do, um, adding this F sharp fixed two things because having an EF here was a half step, and then we had a whole step on top, which was an F to a G. So adding, you understand? So E to F without this sharp was a half step. F sharp to G was a whole step. So by adding this F sharp here, we solved two problems. The E to the F, which was a half step, became a whole step. And the F to the G, which was a whole step, now became a half step. So that's pretty cool. OK, now we're going to take the bass clef G scale and write that backwards. G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. So we put in our bass clef. And we're going to begin on fourth space G, F, E, D, C, B, A, and G. All right, and we know... One, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh note is sharped. Now this is uh, this is interesting here, and it's, I something I forgot to tell you is what happens when we compare G major to C major. What's the difference? Here's C. C is all white keys. G is all white keys, except for the seventh step. So how are they related? Well, that's how they are. G is the exact same set of notes as C major, except for one note. And on what step of the scale is that new note? It's on the seventh step. So by definition, this is very interesting now, by beginning a new scale on the fifth note of the previous scale, previous scale was C, one, two, three, four, five, yeah? What happens is that a new scale is fashioned and a sharp appears on the seventh step of that new scale. So this is where it, it becomes very, almost mathematical. So now I have kind of a theory developing. So if I take a scale, 
like the C scale, go up to its fifth note, construct a new scale, I will add a, an accidental, meaning a sharp or a flat, on the seventh degree of the scale. So this, the same should hold true for the G scale. If I go up to the fifth note of the G scale, which is a D, and construct a new scale, I should have all of the notes of the G scale, see where this is going? Including that F sharp. And then adding a note, uh, a sharp on the seventh degree. So this becomes fascinating now. Um, the G scale gives us the opportunity to say the entire range of G of A to G backwards because it's right there in the scale now if you go backwards. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And you might want to start, if it's difficult, G, F, E, D, G, F, E, D, and then C, B, A, C, B, A, and then combine them. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, and go faster and faster. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, again, you don't, when you're reading music, you don't want to be reading individual notes. You see a scale, and you go, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. It it's, becomes one thing. It's the difference between uh, looking at a word and going, let's see, that's an A and R, and, uh, or looking at a sentence, and then you're looking at, instead of the whole sentence, you're looking at these individual words. You go, what is that word, and how do I pronounce that? Okay? So get a handle on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Okay, and I just want to remind all of you who are watching, um, write in the names of the notes. G, A, B. Do this, you know, at this beginning stage. Just do it. You want to be able to recognize these notes immediately. You, want, you don't want to go, what is this note here? And the more you write, the more you write notes down and say them out loud to yourself, the quicker you, uh, it'll be that you learn them all. Okay, and then do the same going down. One final note, folks, and thanks for hanging in there with me. After two lessons of C and G major, look at what you've learned. You've learned, we've covered the entire treble clef from middle C up to the G above the fifth line. So we, we've covered the, you now know the entire treble clef. If you've really done your homework and you've said the notes and uh, pointed to the note, go G, A, B, C, D, and backwards, forwards. You now know all of the notes of the treble clef. You also now know all of the notes of the bass clef, plus some others, the, the A, B, and the C. So this is why at this rudimentary stage of learning theory, you really got to do it. You, you really have to uh, tackle it right now. Don't, don't let this go, you know, because when we get to E flat major and A flat major, you can't be, you know, saying, what is that note there? Is that an A or an F? Okay, so um, we'll see you next time. Your assignment for the G major scale lesson is simply to write the treble clef part 10 times, put in the letter names each time, and then make sure you practice saying them after you've written them 10 times, going right up and right up the scale. Then take the bass clef, write that out 10 times, write in the notes, say the notes. Then take the treble clef coming down, write that 10 times, write in the individual notes, practice saying G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G.
Okay, take the bass clef, write that out 10 times, write in the notes, say the notes out loud. Well, I bet you didn't see this coming. And uh, thanks for hanging in with me for that ex explanation of the G major scale. Uh, you're cramming your brains with a lot of new information. And so I thought it would be a good time to introduce the concept of circle of fifths because, uh, and you got a, a little smattering of it in, with the beginning two scales. You saw that we began with the note C and we constructed a scale on C and this is the circle of fifths. Now, when you write your circle, I just took a bowl and had my wife hold it down and made a really nice circle. These little glitches here correspond with uh, a clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so uh, that's how you would draw that. So, uh, so getting back to the scales and the circle of fifths here, C major was our first scale we went up the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, remember it's fifths, and we came to G. And what did we do with G? What did we find out about G? We found out that on the seventh step of the G scale, there was an F sharp. So that F sharp represents the seventh step. And then we took that F sharp and we put it at the beginning of the piece, right after the clef, to indicate that this is the key that we're playing in now, G.